What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and my target to review for this edition is Aquaman, the latest in the DC whatever you want to call it. It's not a film universe anymore. It was originally. It was never called the DCEU. Whatever. I don't know. It's Worlds of DC, maybe? I don't know. It's, it's really confusing, but uh, <laughs> what isn't confusing is how this works, the review point itself. Uh, it's pretty simple because all I do is talk about my thoughts on the movie that I just got done watching and tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and I start things off with a spoiler-free review, and before we get into the spoiler section, I will give you a warning, so that way you know not to check that out if you don't want to be spoiled about the movie. So, first things first, the non-spoiler section. Uh... What did I think about the movie overall? Well, um, despite being filled with a lot of action, I honestly found myself kind of bored. And I don't know if it's one of those things where, I guess, you know what, I can take this in a different direction. Um, The movie isn't bad. I just feel like If you took the same script, maybe with, you know, some tweaks here and there, and you had different actors and a different director at, like, the helm for this thing, most of the problems would kind of go away. Uh, One of the reasons why I bring that up is because the movie feels tone deaf, sort of. Uh, And and Actually, you know, tone deaf probably isn't the way to put it. Uh, The tone is just all over the place. Sometimes it feels like it wants to be a parody of itself. Sometimes it wants to be taken extremely seriously, and it wants to be almost like Lord of the Rings. Other times it's just a generic superhero movie. Sometimes it tries to be a comedy, although, to be perfectly honest, the jokes don't land. I don't remember laughing at a single joke in the movie. There might have been one that I chuckled at, but it wasn't a big chuckle either. Sometimes it's silly, sometimes it's supposed to be dark. It just it doesn't know what it is. And that's one of my biggest flaws with the movie. Uh, that and, to be perfectly honest, Aquaman has never been one of my favorite characters. So there wasn't any built-in interest as far as when, say, for instance, Batman. Batman's my favorite comic book character, my favorite fictional character in anything ever to ever exist that I've ever come across. Batman is a character that I feel you can tell lots of different stories about, and they can still be extremely interesting. Sometimes he's a detective, sometimes he's Bat God, and he's, you know, running the show with the Justice League. Sometimes he's just pure action, sometimes he's dark and twisted, sometimes it's really scary, sometimes it's just fun. You know, Spider-Man is my second favorite comic book character, and the story of Peter Parker is something that is pretty much timeless, and you can tweak some things here and there, like, you know, why is he taking uh, pictures for the Daily Bugle, maybe let's switch that up a little bit, so on and so forth. Aquaman, I feel like it's essentially just... Are you doing the ascent to the throne and, you know, this is the typical to be the king type of story, which so many different things have said it in so many different ways. You know, there's always like the I'm the rightful heir, I'm the king that needs to learn how to be a king, all that other kind of stuff. It's an old, old story, so that's kind of a tired trope. Or you tell the story of I am the pissy Aquaman who is mad at the surface world, and when you've got ocean master doing the pissed at the surface world type of thing you kind of get both in the same story so going out of this i really don't feel like you have a second aquaman movie that you can tell even though they do kind of tease that and i'll I'll get into a little bit more of that with the spoiler section but the movie feels like if they did the same movie again people would hate it because this isn't getting bad reviews. It's getting, you know, some positive reception here and there. And like I said, it's not a bad movie. It's just not all that great. And I almost feel like the film would be better if they would have had... Maybe they do the whole movie and they 
learn from the mistakes and they change it up for a sequel. But then I also feel like if you changed it too much, the people that liked this movie aren't going to like a sequel. So it's tough because this this is almost the best Aquaman movie that they could possibly make. But again, if you change some of the actors and you change the director, I think, which by the way, James Wan pulled off a lot of things in this movie really well. I don't want that to come off as saying like, I think that James Wan did a terrible job. No, it's just, there were some choices that were made that I think were ones that would have been avoided if somebody else would have taken on the role. For instance, music. What the hell was going on with the music in this movie? There were orchestral themes that sounded like they stole them from Kingsman. There were there was a part where there was like a hip hop version of Africa. The credits were like a bubblegum pop type of thing. One of the action sequences it seemed like they copied and pasted something from Tron Legacy. So you can't really have, well, this one's going to be the Tron theme, and then this one's going to be the hip-hop thing, and then here's going to be the, I don't know, jazz thing or something. It's just, it didn't work. And I I was liking the uh, kind of main heroic theme that was in the trailers, which I can't even really hum because it's not hummable. That's just kind of like the bum, 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 bum kind of thing or whatever like that. But anytime that there was some kind of orchestral music in this movie, I felt like it was just loud and it was just shrieking at me the idea of just like choir, ah, symphony, you know, that kind of a thing. So the music, major miss on this, major, major miss. I'll offset the, that, though, by talking about a major hit, which was the visual effects. Because outside of a couple shots here and there where I could tell that it was just like, all right, that's that's a green screen type of thing, where, you know, the front and the back didn't quite match up all that way. And I saw this in 3D, which I never like seeing things in 3D all that much because it does take away from it a little bit. So maybe that was a little bit part of that. But the best part of this movie is the visual effects. And... I could see this 100% getting nominated for Best Visual Effects at the Academy Awards. I think that there's a good chance that it could win. And it wouldn't annoy me if that were the case. So if you watch the movie and you really like how it looks, then by all means, of course, you like the way that it looks. And I'm not going to argue with you on that point whatsoever. Acting-wise, though, not uh, not a fan. Um, Jason Momoa, again, when he's playing the bro type thing, it's kind of fun. When he's playing like the serious king, I don't really buy it all that much a whole lot. I mean, he looks the part and, he, you know, he's a badass in a lot of different ways and stuff like that. But just it, it seems like it's like acting to me. Uh, Amber Heard, I didn't buy her at any point in the movie. Patrick Wilson was hamming it up. And when you do the whole thing with Ocean Master, like Ocean Master is the obvious villain you need to go with for this movie. Uh there's no better Aquaman story that you can really tell other than the Ocean Master type of villainy. And Patrick Wilson wouldn't have been a bad person for the role, but I feel like he was hamming it up. And this is guy this isn't really a spoiler, but for instance, he's looking to be considered the king of kings in the ocean, so that way he can fully declare war on the surface. So if you are a king, like King of Atlantis, and then you've got King Nerus and King whatever, and you know, so on and so forth. If you are the king of kings, you are called the Ocean Master, which makes a lot of sense because it's like you are the king of kings, you are the master of the oceans, of all seven seas, etc. And multiple characters refer to that title throughout the movie. They say things like, well, then if he gets four out of seven, uh, then he will be the Ocean Master. You're already saying Ocean Master. So that's a title that seems believable and it doesn't come off too hokey. But when you have a scene of him being like, no, call me Ocean Master. It's just, it's cheesy and lame. You know, Black Manta does the same thing. He's just like, you can call me Black Manta. We are like, well, okay. Like, are we in 2002 range now with the superhero movies? You know, we're back to the whole, like, 
you know, I, I hit a bullseye on everything. People even call me bullseye. Like that's, that's not a line from the movie, but you know what I mean? Like that, they, they did that kind of crap because they didn't have any context to know that you could get away with doing things like you don't have to call Thanos the mad Titan. You can have people just refer to things off on the side, you know, and you can make fun of certain things and speaking of making fun of things, another miss, miss I had said before though, the jokes just did not land. They weren't funny. I didn't enjoy that kind of aspect of the movie. I actually would have been uh, more in favor of them not even trying to make the jokes as opposed to when they tried to make the jokes and they failed. Um, so I, I guess that's as good as I can get as far as a breakdown before I get into the spoiler section. So from now on warning, Spoilers from here on. I don't know what type of spoilers I'm going to say because I'm just doing this off the cuff. But uh, if you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want to know what happens, bookmark this. Go watch the movie. Come back and check it out later. But if you don't care about spoilers, then by all means, continue listening now. So let's get into character wise. Uh, I mentioned before that we've got Aquaman played by Jason Momoa and he was fine in the movie. He he brought that bro charm type of thing into a couple scenes and that was good. But when half of the movie is him doing that and the other half of the movie is him being like, Oh, but I'm actually really scared to be the King and all that. It's a complete flip. And I don't really like that. I just buy that. This is like, okay, this is the scene where I'm supposed to be introspective. And then this is the scene where I'm supposed to be fun again. And then this is the scene where I'm supposed to be introspective. It just kind of it's, it happens because it happens. It doesn't happen because the story says that that's supposed to happen then, or that it's like a natural character flow. This is the type of thing that I'm sure I would be super guilty of when I you would write certain things. I'm positive that I would run into that trap. So I can't talk like you know I could do better necessarily. I might be able to do better. I don't know. I never written an Aquaman movie, but to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't write an Aquaman movie. I would why uh, write you know. Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Aquaman is a tough character to write without getting into silly. And I'm glad that they incorporated his talking to fish in a way that wasn't a complete joke. So that was good. That Leviathan creature, though, I kind of wanted it to maybe sort of get killed. And I kind of wanted Volko to die, too, because I felt like there wasn't really any sacrifice in this movie. So maybe they could have gone with that a little bit. But I'm glad that they kept Atlanta around. Nicole Kidman, she filled the part perfectly fine. No complaints, really, for me on that. Uh, I liked uh, Morrison as Tom Curry. That was fine. And their relationship. I don't know if I buy that as having like the super amazing chemistry, but it, it was okay. Amber Heard, I mentioned she just wasn't doing anything for me and she was kind of written pretty wooden. So maybe it's not her fault, but maybe it was Amber Heard that just wasn't doing a good enough job. So I don't know if I don't want to blame the mirror character, the writers for the mirror character or just Amber Heard um, or a combination of all of them. Uh, I talked about Ocean Master. I'm glad that they didn't kill Ocean Master. However, I don't think that there's really ever going to be a point that you can bring him back if you do a sequel that it won't just feel kind of stupid because he's not Loki. He's not like he's like super fun and you really, 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 really want to see him. Black Manta, he was kind of wooden as well. And I'm glad that they didn't kill him off either. But again, if you just do a movie that's Black Manta wants to kill Aquaman, I don't think that there's really a story to tell. So that is kind of negative here, but they, they kind of set that up as just being, okay, well, if we want to do another one of these, then we can have Dr. Steven Shin, I think is his name, uh, that he helps Black Manta, and I don't know what else happens. The Trench were cool. The Piranha people like them. They were cool. Just mindless mooks, you know, there's really nothing to them. King Neris, uh, whatever, <laughs> you know, not, not fantastic, not awful. Mostly though, everybody just felt like they were in a superhero movie from over 10 years ago. And 
even the plot, it was just sort of blah. So the more I think about the movie, the less I liked the movie. And if I have to say, is the movie a hit or a miss? Uh, that's tough. I would say if you go into it thinking Aquaman is the lamest superhero, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. If you go into it expecting the same kind of quality that you would get from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're going to be disappointed. This isn't the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is DC. So it's, you know, they've got a lot of problems. But on the scale of you've got Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. Pretty sure I'm not forgetting anything else from the DCEU. Uh, so I'm still calling it the DCEU, and it's not. It shouldn't be. Oh, and we got Justice League. Of course I'm forgetting about Justice League. I would say my favorite out of those movies is either Man of Steel or Batman v Superman. And then the other one is number two. Number three is probably... Oof, that's off. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I would say it might be Suicide Squad because at least that's fun and stupid. And I think Wonder Woman is incredibly overrated. And I think that this isn't going to be incredibly overrated, but I think that this is going to be given a higher score just because it's like, well, it was not that bad, you know, that kind of a thing. So. I don't know. My least favorite is probably Justice League at this point, just because Justice League has so many problems, but it's more fun in certain ways too. So maybe Aquaman's my least favorite, but Wonder Woman, there's a lot of problems in Wonder Woman. It's just, there's a lot of problems in all these movies. That's the problem. So if I were to give it a hit, it would be the weakest hit, but I'm leaning a little bit more towards that middle range where it just, it isn't either. It's not bad enough to be called a bad movie. It's not good enough to be called a good movie. It's probably the type of movie that I will end up having in my collection, but not buying the Blu-ray of and never watching again. So keep that in mind. If you haven't seen the movie yet and my review is going to sway you one way or the other, I recommend checking it out just to see it for the visuals, if not to make your own opinion about it. But if you're leaning one way or the other and you really aren't thinking all that strongly about it, Maybe you don't want to spend $20 to see it in the theaters, you know? So I want to know what you guys have to say about this movie. If you checked it out or if you haven't, why you haven't checked it out or, you know, anything else you want to drop in the comments below, go ahead and do that. Make sure that you subscribe on the YouTube channel and ring that little bell for the notifications because that's good. <laughs> Uh, keep paying attention as well for everything else that's happening. Uh, I might go see Bumblebee this weekend. And if I do, then I will do some kind of a review on that. I've kind of learned my lesson to not want to see these movies in theaters as much anymore, but Hey, AMC a list means it will be free. So yeah, I'll probably end up checking it out if I have the time. And if I do, you'll get a rant from me, maybe a rave. I don't know. So Stay tuned for that or anything else that's happening. Check everything out on fanboysanonymous.com. And if you would like to see more of the podcast side of things or more of anything in particular, consider hitting up the Patreon. Uh, on that, I've got a couple different tiers and there are options where you can request certain kinds of features and everything. Or if you just, you know, have a spare change, uh, have a spare change, have some spare change and you want to throw a buck my way just to help keep the lights on and everything, then that would be greatly appreciated. But whatever you do, whether it's a Patreon side of things or you buy a t-shirt on our Redbubble or Public shops, or you just hit the like button on this, whatever the case may be, all the support's greatly appreciated, everybody. So that's going to do me in for my review point of this. So I'm Tony Mango, and I'm a fanboy. See you next time, everybody. It's time for me to geek out.